one-sided tonight. Left side over here, you're going to have to shout real loud. Take care of the right side on this side. But we're glad each and every one of you is in the house of the God tonight. Good to have all of our friends from Cartuga J that's come over the mountain to be with us tonight. Wherever you're from, we're glad you're here. But most of all, we're glad to see this man on the front pew back in the house of God. <laughs> Four or five weeks now recovering from a, a car accident that by all human means and earthly standards should have took him into eternity. Uh, but he's on a pew tonight ready to worship and glorify God. And we just appreciate him and I'm going to let Brother Seth say a few words to you tonight. Oh, praise the Lord. It, it is wonderful to be in the Lord's house tonight. Amen. And it's good to see each one of you. And um, uh, Brother Luke was telling me that uh, Pastor kept coming to y'all and saying, well, this is wrong with him, and he's got this, he's facing this, and he's facing that, and uh, but I want to tell you right now that God was with me every step of the way, and uh, <laughs> wait a minute, wait a and uh, my, my cousin Jamie said I decided to take a detour, so we called it the detour, and uh, so that detour ended us up in the creek, and I've been by to look at that, and, and you see rocks, and you see trees, and, and you see things that... Uh, like the pastor said, it was just God himself. And uh, it's a miracle of God that I'm standing here before you all tonight. And I uh, want you all to welcome my friend Stephanie. It's a good to have her here tonight. And most of all, it is good to feel the presence of the Lord. And, and uh, no blockages, that's a good thing. And no blood clots. And uh, uh, lungs look good. And uh, I tell you, God is good. Amen. And it's good to be here back with my pastor. Thank you.
see Brother Philip and Sister Crystal. And just feeling that welcome here. And seeing Brother Hank and I told him tonight I'm hungry. I got a hunger that just cannot be filled. I want a hunger that can't be filled. I want to just keep hungry and hungry for God's word and for him to touch us and to revive the church. I feel like our church is just slacking. We need prayers. We need the Christians need prayers today for our kids and our children. And um, I haven't called Brother Philip, but I got good news, Brother Philip. Got good news. My son that I prayed for for a long time. And Brother Philip knows that the Lord gave me a message one night that he's going to take care of it. There's going to be victory. And he's changed. There's a visual change in him. And um, it's been going on for probably about 120 or 30 days. And I haven't really said a lot because I didn't want to, you know, jump, jump ahead. But if it's not, it's okay because God's already told me. God's given me that promise. And I believe in Him. I believe what He's told me. But I see a change. I see a change in my son. And I thank God for it. Amen. I thank God. And there was times that I looked at Him and I thought, God, there's no hope. You know, even though I can remember what God told me so many times, I would look and thank God. I would look at the circumstances. And not towards God. Yeah. But I would look at that circumstance and I would think, God, there's, there's no hope. It's never going to get better. But it is gotten better. And he's put his family back together again. And I just pray. I praise God for it. And I just ask you to lift him up. Lift him up. Because depression, when, when they go through this, depression sets in. And it's hard to fight depression after that. And I just pray that God lift him up and his family. And I thank God for what he's done. And I thank God for the blood of Jesus. The blood of the Lamb. We couldn't do anything without the blood. And I just thank him for it. Praise God.
give the Lord a hand. Amen. What songs is I to build your faith up? Praise God. It's, uh, hey, hello. There's a, there's a double cure in that atonement. Praise God. Hallelujah. Good to see Brother Seth. Good smile. That good smile on me. Everybody give a smile at like Brother Seth can. Amen, Brother. Hallelujah. Love you. Been praying for you. Praise God. Good to see everybody tonight. I was hoping I had a half a voice left after I left here this morning. Lord, have mercy to God. I'm telling you what. He about preached that about preached me high and dry. Hello, have mercy. It's good to be here though. Praise God. I hope, hope pray you come to receive from the Lord tonight. Yes. I got one yes, so about the rest of it. You come to receive from the Lord. Amen. You know, lot, lots of word don't go past the front two or three pews. You gotta be able to take this word. You know, lots of people they, they'll rejoice over what they hear, but they don't make it theirs. So when you rejoice over just what you hear, that way when you ask people when you get outside, what was the message about? Well, I don't have a clue, but it sure was good. <laughs> See, you only got that flesh is only touching not the heart and not the spirit. I want to touch your spirit tonight. And I want to touch your will that when you leave here, you're going to have something to chew on the rest of the week. Amen. Going to carry you through. Praise God. Hallelujah. Brother Philip, what I'm fixing to preach tonight. The last service I was with you, God had dealt with me to do something and it didn't happen that night. And I wondered why. But tonight I see why. Praise God. Hallelujah. That night, that night wasn't fulfilled in my spirit, but it is tonight. There's something in the spirit happening that night. The last night I was with him in revival in cartoons. God had dealt with me to do something. It didn't, it never, it never come about into being. I had that when I've been waiting to get here with you, brother. Amen. But tonight, I want to bring out what he's been dealing with me on. Amen to God. I'm telling you, thanks God, if you, you better be on the battlefield. You better, if you're on the front lines of the battle, I'm going to show you how to fight tonight. Praise God. He showed me to come and stir your faith up. Stir your faith up. I want to stir your faith up tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. If you got your scripture, I want you to go to 1 John chapter 5. I've been on this scripture. I was with a little bit in revival, amen. But I'm telling you this scripture, the Holy Ghost is burning me. I'm telling you it's been a burning for a while. And I want to preach on this tonight. First John chapter 5, verse number 4. You talking about one power pack little verse right here. Hey, amen. I'm telling you, I, it couldn't have done no better what they were saying was. They, they sang my message. You ever, you ever had to do that to your pastor when they sing your message? <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm telling you, it's good. Hallelujah. First John chapter 5, verse 4. When you have that, say amen. So I know you're ready. Amen. Look at this scripture right here. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. Hello, is everybody here at Murphy tonight? I'm going to read that again. I want the whole church to read it out loud with me. Can you do that? You need to read, read that verse out loud with me. 1 John 5, verse 4. Are you ready? Let's read. For whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. I want to preach on the victory of faith tonight. Praise God. Hallelujah. Saints of God, hey, this ain't no time to hang your heads or put your hearts on the willow. It's time to somebody see faith inside of you. When they do, they'll see the victory. Praise God. I see the victory in you, brother. I see the victory in that testimony, brother Rocky. I see the victory in you, sister. Praise God about the boy. Hallelujah. I see the victory. It's faith of victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith, praise God. Would you pray for me before you see? Would you reach your hands up this way? I want you to pray that God will anoint me to speak no more and no less than what He ordains tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we love you. We thank you and praise you. Hallelujah. And we give you the glory, Father, everything, God, that you have done. Hallelujah. Touch every heart and every soul and every life. And I pray God send the word, heal and deliver. 
This night we do pray and I ask God what you've been stepping in my spirit. Step here at the Murphy Church in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I pray step it in our wheels and step it in our hearts, God, and let us rejoice with you, Father. Hallelujah to God for the victory that you sent through your Son. Thanks be unto God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you tonight for what you're going to do. And if anybody's got enough faith to believe, say amen. amen. Thank you. You can be seated if you can. Hallelujah. You know, uh, you get to think about this word faith. I'll tell you, that's something that's hard. It's hard to get past. It's so big. I said it's so big this word faith is. I've been on this about every word of the Bible. I'll preach faith somewhere, Lord. I'll make God deals with me about it. Amen. How many knows how, how many knows where faith comes from? Faith comes by hearing. Romans 10. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by this word of God. So if you get a hold of tonight, I'll be going to hear something to build you up. Praise God. He'll build your faith up. Amen. Did you know that faith's built up, not feelings? Did you catch that? I said, when the real word comes, it'll build your faith up, not your feelings. Uh, lots of people is covered by feelings. Thank God for that testimony, Rocky. Two weeks, you didn't feel nothing, but I'll let me tell you something. That's where faith's got to come alive. That's where faith lays a hold of the invisible. Hey, man, that's where you take roots downward and bear fruit upward. Hey, man, to God. I'm telling you, say, thank God for the feelings. Ain't that right? Thank God for the Spirit of God moving upon us. Move. Hey, man, I thank God for it. But brothers and sisters, that's what times you won't feel nothing. Brother, I'm telling you, you walk by faith and not by sight. Praise God. I said you keep praising and you keep worshiping and you keep a living in Him and you keep praying and you keep in that Word and you keep in church and you keep a victory. My daddy taught me something all my life. He poured this inside of us boys. <laughs> Three things to keep the victory. Three things. He preached this. Tell your brother, it's blue in see. Three things if you're going to keep the victory. You know what it is? Pray. Stand in church and read your word. And you'll keep a victory. First sign of the backsliders is filled with his own ways. Is that right? Won't be in church much like it once was. He'll quit reading the Word of God like he once did. Huh? Yes, sir, brother. And he'll quit praying. One of them three things he'll fall out of right there. And that's the first sign of a backslide. He quit going to church. Faith up won't be built like that. Saints of God, you keep the faith. Keep praying. Keep going to church. Hello. And then hallelujah to God, you keep the victory. Praise God. Keep reading your Word. Let's get There is a measure. How many knows we've been measured? A measure of faith. Anybody know you scripture where well, you got a measure tonight? Romans 12, 3. Don't think the more highly of yourself than you ought to think. Amen. Don't stick your nose up there. Amen. I said don't think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. But think soberly. It's God's death to every man. To, listen, the measure of faith. <laughs> have you been using your measure? I said have you been using your measure? So if each one of us has got a measure of faith, I wonder what happened if all of us put our measures together. Huh? I said, what if all of us start putting our measure of faith together? Your little bit, but my little bit, and everybody's little bit, it'd be a great big bit. Wouldn't that right? Hey, man, I believe big enough. Hey, he didn't say if you had faith the size of a dump truck, you could move them out to. He said if you had faith as a grain of the size of a mustard seed, and bring your little mustard seed. Let's put it together up here and I praise God. I said, let's see God pour some out to hell. Hallelujah. I'm talking about victory, saints of God. There is a measure of faith. Use your measure. Faith is a gift of God, Scripture tells me in Ephesians 2 8. Yeah, it's a gift of God. So why don't you accept it and receive it? Faith is not hot and cold flashy. I'm fixing to deal with something right here. I said, faith is not hot and cold flashes. Oh, I'm about to freeze to death. I'm about to burn up the baloney. Get a hold of this word and sink your teeth inside of it. Oh, okay, if you got hot flashes, no flash. Hey, man, you got this word forever established in heaven. Sink your faith in it, you'll stay. Hello, I come to help build you up tonight. Hey, man, to God. Listen to this. Faith is not mystical. It's something mystic. Faith is not tied up with your feelings. Feelings come, feelings go. 
Faith is not something you can see. Huh? Faith is not something you can see. Faith is what you believe. Faith is what you believe. He said to them that believe on Him. Believe on Him. Huh? When you start believing on Him, you'll have a manifestation of Him. <laughs> you see, you wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost until you believed. You wasn't saved until you believed. Believe what? You believe what this Word said. He died for you. I said he was crucified. He was your substitutionary death. He took your place. He died your death. Hallelujah. He died on the cross. He had his blood for our sins. And by him we are saved. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. He was raised again for our justification. And he's singing the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us. Praise God. And he's coming again one day. Faith believes happening. And there was a manifestation of what that faith was. Yes. Let me move on right here. How many know this? Find a church who believes God is. Yes. And that God is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. You'll find a church that's got real faith. Yeah, yeah how, about, how about around here? Anybody believe God is? Yes. I said God is. Amen. He is, he always was, and always will be. <laughs> Amen. He's a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Praise God. Faith will lift you up out of ruin. Faith will pull you out of the ditch. Faith will pull you out of the ditch, brother. Brother says, Seth knows what he is. Sir. Go to the bottom of the ditch. <laughs> then get something and pull him out. I got something in the back of my truck. You know what it's called? Long chain. And I carry that baby around. Hey, Amen. You know what I found? People stuck in ditches, stuck in ditches, stuck in ditches. They're going on the road, get to, get to looking left and right. Next thing they'll call whale ball right the ditch. They come by and wait. I, brother, I had them wait me down. Hey, is there any way you can pull me out of the ditch? I said, if you don't mind and you won't say nothing about the scratching and the streaking, I'll pull you out. Pull me out, brother. I said, okay, you give me permission. I'll back up and pull that log chain out. Hook up the back side of that bumper of mine. Run up under him. Find that word where I can hook him up. Hook him up. Put that bag in four wheel drive. Pull him out of the ditch and put him back on the road. Hey, man, get my log chain. Put it back in the tube. I said, God bless you, brother. Do you know Jesus as your Savior? He's coming again. Hallelujah. See you. Howdy on Saturday. Glory to God. What happened? Faith's like that. Faith is like a log chain. It'll pull you up out of the muck. Pull you out of the mud. Up in the heavenly places, praise God. Put you back on the path. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. This is right here. Faith will get you up and move you when everything else is dead. Faith puts you back in eternity where everything's real. How many knows this right? I'm not ashamed to tell you how many times the Holy Ghost has took me through this one scripture. Has the Holy Ghost ever took you to a scripture time and time and time and time again? And I'm thinking, Lord, am I not getting this? I'm talking about saints, God, I'm not ashamed to tell you how many times the Holy Ghost said, take me through this next verse. I'm, that's the reason I preached it everywhere I go. He put it in that. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Oh, yeah. You don't walk by sight, you walk by faith. When you walk by sight, this is right here. I wrote this down. Walk by sight, you'll see yourself as a grasshopper. Walk by sight, you'll hide in the foxholes when Goliath gets out and bellies. Walk by sight, only thing you'll see is a burning fire and furnace. Walk by sight, and you'll never pull up your tent pegs and move with God. Walk by sight, and you never have a baby, Sarah. I said, walk by sight, and you won't have a baby, Sarah. Walk by sight and you'll never march around Jericho walls. Ain't too big. I said too big. You walk by sight, you won't march around that. <laughs> you listen to this. Walk by sight and you'll never see the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Not till you believe it's for you. And he is a rewarder. He will baptize you. He'll do exactly what his word says. When your faith rises up, lay a hold of that word, then there'll be a manifestation of it. <laughs> 
Walk by sight and you'll never fulfill the agenda of God. Walk by sight and there will be a revival in her land. But walk by faith and you won't see yourself as a grasshopper. Walk by faith and you'll pick up your slingshot and run after Goliath. Walk by faith and you won't bow down to a burning fire furnace in the iron made of gold 90 foot tall. I said walk by faith and you'll pull your tent pegs up when everybody else is passed up and camping. Walk by faith and you'll swing baby, Sarah. I said, walk by faith, and you can stand on top of dead dry bones and preach over them. And they'll stand up, praise God. How do you shout before it gets here, praise God? Oh, hallelujah. Tell the right This has been my faith up, praise God. Walk by faith, you will receive the Holy Ghost in fire. Notice I said, and fire. Yes, sir, brother. That's a baptism of love. You ain't never got a hold of that. You ever been baptized in love? Ain't no fire hotter than that. I said, ain't no fire hotter than a baptized baptism of love. When that pours through your saints, God, you'll love, you'll walk on, you'll please God. Hallelujah. Walk by faith, you'll fulfill the agenda of God. I said, walk by faith, and you'll shake a crippled boy and shake him up out of the wheelchair. Yeah, hell, I lost the church when I said that. Lost the church when they got there. Did you know, read your scripture, check it out, the book of Acts. Chapter number three. Peter and John going up to the hour of prayer. Been about the night fire. Hello. They just going up to pray. They was on the outside. Didn't make the church yet. They was on the outside heading up to pray. There a man sat at the gate called you for 40 years. He sat there crippled, never walked, never nothing. And he asked arms. Thank God he asked the right one, didn't he? Brother, put your cup up. Huh? Put your cup up. For what you're about to receive, that cup can't hold. Huh? In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. Amen. And he sat there and didn't move. Right. Read your scripture. Right. Said he sat there. What happened? Peter stretched forth his hand and took a hold of him. See, if you don't walk by faith, you'll never stretch your faith. Lots of people stop faith, but they never stretch your faith in the power of God. Until you learn to act on faith, there won't be no manifestation of faith. Glory to God. Face like a bicycle. Get on it and pedal. You got to work it. I said work out on faith. He acted on faith and what happened? God worked to work. His bones received strength. And he jumped up on his feet and went jumping, shouting in the temple. Amen. Boy, that been good to come to church when jumping up and down, can't hold it, brother. It's the ping pong through here. You know what I do? Give him the microphone. What's going on, brother? Hey, man, that's a bit of faith come by. They believe God he you make. Lord, have mercy. Did you know faith is in the invisible and not the visible? Huh? I'm fixing to give you some scripture that I miss, miss you up. If you understand what I'm talking about. First Peter 1 8. Whom having not seen you love. Has anybody seen Christ? No. Nobody didn't raise your hands right here. Whom having not seen you love. How many here loves him? How many here loves Jesus Christ? I'm not seeing him. I've not seen them nail scarred hands. I've not seen that ribbon pierced side. But I love him. Look at this right here. And though you see him not, yet believe him, you rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. <laughs> I'm not seeing him. Why are you so happy? Because I know he's real. I know he's alive. I know he who inhabiteth eternity dwells in me. Huh? Never read that scripture? He who inhabits eternity dwells with him who's a broken and a contract spirit. He lives in me, praise God. My Lord have mercy to God. How about you, Thomas? Thomas. We've seen Jesus. Well, you've seen him. I have seen him. I'll not believe. 
next time see the print of his nails. Guess what? Jesus heard them words. I said Jesus heard them words. You know, there's something we attach on to Thomas. You know what it is? Doubting Thomas. <laughs> we put that on. Doubting Thomas. I don't care if you've seen him or not seen him. Except I've seen the print of his nails. You know what he's want? I want the real genuine Jesus. That's right. Come on. Huh? I want to know it's him. Unless I see them print of his nails and put my finger out, I won't believe. Jesus heard the words. Eight days later, the door is shut. It locked down. FBI can't even get that joint. What happened? Somebody slipped through the walls, come stood in the middle of them, and said, Peace be unto you. <laughs> and guess who he called on? Come here, Thomas. Oh, Lord, have mercy. You talk about a service, brother, right here's one. You tell you, I believe we need one of these right here in mercy. Yeah. We need one of these sons. He stood right in the middle of them. And he said, Thomas, reach him in your hand. Oh, yes. yeah. And he stuck his hand and said, behold my hands. Could you imagine Thomas running his finger through the nail holes? His finger gone out of sight through the master's hand. Then pulled it back out. And all of a sudden, Jesus rose back that road. There's that side that had been riven. Out came blood and water. He said, Thomas, reach into your hand. Stick it in my side. Could you imagine Thomas running that hand up in the master's side? He said, Thomas, oh, you know what happened to Thomas? He hit his knees. I guarantee he hit his knees. He said, my Lord and my God. Jesus said, Thomas, because you've seen me, you believe. But blessed are them who have never seen, but yet yeah. believe. Blessed are just me. I said, that's me. I'm not seen, but that's me. And he said, I'm blessed. I ain't put my finger in his nail print hands, but I believe he's real. Praise God. What was he doing? Jesus was moving him from the visible to start walking in the invisible. Yeah. Let me tell you something, church. I'm going to drop something to you. The Holy Ghost gave me last week. Talking about for a church. I believe it might be just for this. It's the first time I've got to pull it out. I'm going to load up the ship. I'm going to load up the slingshot and shoot it right here. All right? Here's what the Holy Ghost spoke to me. Believe in the supernatural and expect it. Come on. I started going to churches different, sister. I started praying for people different. Hey, man, to God, it's been lots of times I prayed to like nothing happened. That don't stop me. I want to pray again. I prayed for miracles for people that the next day there's a burden. What'd that do to your faith? I said, I don't care. Might be the next thing he'll let a whole other generation from the dead. Praise God. It ain't up to me. It's up to me to pray and believe God. And let God do His work. Praise God. I better get back up here. I'm about to. <laughs> Praise God. Hit it, everybody, okay? Unless something wrong ain't done the job of preaching it. I don't get you the place you are. You're disturbed. Amen to God. Listen to this. Hebrews 11 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Look at this right here. Evidence of things. No, what? Yeah, so you think so? That's real faith. Look at this. Look at this scripture right here. Let me keep on, let me keep on moving right here. You check your scripture out here to get a hold of it. Through faith, we understand the worlds are framed by the word of God. So that the things which are seen, all these mountains, all the emotions, all the deserts, everything, things which you see were made of things which don't appear. He didn't go out to a sawmill and cut lumber. He didn't go to a mountain and pull out rocks for a foundation. Brother, he made this world out of nothing. And if he can make this world out of nothing, we don't have enough faith to believe God. We can walk in and see like nothing's going to happen. Praise God. Wow. Hello. I read a scripture one time. Shook me up. Hello. You still with me? I read a scripture one time. I said, well, Lord, if you made all this and you word of God, I could keep reading, said he hung it. I said, what's this world of holding up? I said, there's nothing underneath this earth of holding up. Ain't no props. I said, there ain't no crutches. Can't see flips and flops and 
spinning on his axe and it falls out. Ain't no crutches under nothing. This is a hanging up man. Till I come across the scripture. And when I come across this boy, it got a hold of me. <laughs> Ready for it? Here it is. He said it's held together by the word of his power. He mm. spoke the word and it's held together by the word of his power. But if he can hold these plants together by his word, I wonder what we will do with his word. I, hell, I believe what we should do with his word. Praise God. I'm moving on right here. Anybody want to endure? Let me see your hand. You want to endure? Put this scripture in your shepherd's sack. By faith, Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who's invisible. When you catch a glimpse of the invisible, you'll endure, praise God. Catch a glimpse of Jesus like you never had in a long chill word, saints of God. Now I'll give you a few scripts right here that mess you up. You ready? Hello, I got one scripture. Thank you, Sister Kenny. Luke 1 45. Blessed is she who believed. For there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. Hello, I'm trying to tie up faith with the word. Listen to this right here. This is Elizabeth talking to Mary. When Elizabeth was old and stricken in years, she's six months pregnant. She who's old and stricken in years. Papa Zechariah grinning, grinning like a possum eating saw growers. Mary went down to salute Elizabeth to stay with her a little while. And while Mary came down, they met together something happened in Elizabeth's womb. It said at the sound of her salutation, the babe leaped in her womb and was filled with the Holy Ghost. And the power of God came on Elizabeth and she began to prophesy. What she prophesied, listen to what the Holy Ghost spoke for her. Blessed is she who believed, for there shall be a performance of those things which are told her from the Lord. Yes. You shall have a child, and you shall have him in swaddling clothes, and you shall be pregnant, not even knowing a man. Come on. Yeah. Ain't no man going to be involved in this. He's going to be the power of God. Ain't that like God? I said, ain't that like God, brother? All hope's gone. 
Ain't nothing you can count on. Nothing in the flesh you can lean on. And God comes on board and says, Be a good cheer. Glory to God. I know that's God. Because only my God speaks something like that, but everything don't look right. I know that's my Jesus. Search his scripture out and go through Jesus' life. And look everywhere he said, Be a good cheer. Huh? Everyone said that, brother. They was in hopeless situations. And when it was hopeless, Jesus come walking on the water and said, be of good cheer in his eye. Be not afraid. He stood on board this ship that's about to go down and he said, be of good cheer. Listen. He said, be of good cheer. No man shall be lost but the ship. For the there stood by me this night the angel of God whose I am and whose I serve and said, fear not, Paul. You must be brought to Caesar. For God's given you all them that's on the ship. Yes. Then he says this. Brother, you're listening to me. You're going to lose some trolls up there. But be a good cheer. For an angel stood by me tonight on board this ship and said, don't you fear. Don't you worry. Be a good cheer. The ship's going to go down, but you're going to be saved. This is what Paul said. Brother, I believe it shall be unto me just like he told me. That's faith. I said, that's faith. What happened? Every one of them was given unto him. Ship went down, ship sunk. But this is all, every one of them, 276 people were saved. I wonder what happened. I wonder what happened tonight. If one woman of faith or one man of God of faith struck, stand up and believe in God. This world's sinking. I said, this world is sinking. But right in the middle of God's got a church right over here. And Brother Saints got, he's got to have some people full of faith that have believed God right smack in the middle of it. Hey, be a good cheer. There's somebody who died for you. You don't have to die. His name is Jesus. Praise God. Put your faith in him and you will not sink. <laughs> wow. This is right here. Joshua 21 45. This is what he said after he went through all the land and conquered. Joshua said this, There's not failed one ought of the word which he's spoken unto me. Every bit of it's come to pass. Huh? Said every bit of it's come to pass. So if you have faith in the invisible, faith is linked with the word of God. So when you get them two together, you have faith and power. Huh? I said faith and power. When you get the faith working right, the power will start working. Yeah, I said the power start working. Look at this right here. Here's blind Bartimaeus. Mark chapter 10, verse 46. You know the story? Verse 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, right down through that. Blind Bartimaeus said, by the highway side thing. And when he heard of Jesus coming by, he began to do something. Jesus, the natural son of God, have mercy on me. Now look at this right here. Them people who was around blind part of this come up and done something. Shh. You're talking too loud. Shh. Doubters. Hello, I said doubters will do that. People start that. Shh, don't say that too loud. Shh, don't talk like that too loud. Somebody might hear you. Shh. What did happen to blind part of this? He turned the volume up. Jesus, Son of David, have mercy on me. Yeah. Brother, you're going to disturb everybody. He crunk it up, brother, on the river. Jesus, I wish I could shout and blow the winners out of here. Have mercy on me. Yeah. Jesus stopped in his tracks in the street. Turned around and called him. Send that one over here. He was over crying. Hey, son, the very ones who tried to shut him up are the very ones who had to go back and tell him Jesus wants him. I like how Jesus works, don't you? <laughs> Very once he's full of doubt. He's not going to get one full of faith. He wants you. He wants us. He wants you. What do you want me to do for you? I want to bring you my daughters. <laughs> Jesus said, Thy faith has made thee whole. Go on. Uh, stop. Re rewind that. Rewind that. What did Jesus say? Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go on. You still didn't catch it. Rewind it again. 
Jesus said, Thy faith hath made thee whole. His faith, Pastor, stopped Jesus in the street and shut down the powders and brought the power of God to where he was. And two eyeballs he had in his head, walking away from our glory to God. <laughs> what about Stephen? Stephen was a man, that chapter 7 said, he's full of faith and the Holy Ghost. Are you full of faith in the Holy Ghost? Acts chapter 7, verse number 8. Said Stephen, a man full of faith and power. And somehow faith and power goes together. You have faith in the unseen, they have faith in the word, they have faith in power. Ain't that beautiful? I said, is that not beautiful? So crank your faith up and I believe mean, there'll be a manifestation of what God said he would do. If you'll just believe what he said. Now, my, I'm going to testify right here just a minute too. But my mother, my mother always had seizures all my life. See, when I mean by seizures, she didn't know when a seizure was coming on. I remember she used to take us and everything she drove, she crashed, you know. She, I mean, I was about five years old, five, six years old. She was driving, I mean, she was driving like a wild Indian. Crash everything, run in the stores. <laughs> Anyhow, was at the Presenting the Church of God on a Wednesday night. I remember it was about six sets of scenic steps going down the back of the church. Mama come out, hit the church the service was over. She was heading back home, heading to the vehicle. She stood on the top step and had a seizure and turned a complete cartwheel somerset on these feet over top of your head. And went. When she turned the somerset, her head landed on the bottom step on the corner down there. Busted her head, got slammed open. We picked her up, put her in the, we had a van, had a van only had two seats in it. Mom and Dad set the seats and all of us kids sat in the back, me and Brother Clay and all of us. Roll, we each lay down and rolled across that devil's branch up through there. We looked at Mom up and took the hospital from that day before we started having seizures. We couldn't leave her by herself. Nobody, I'm talking about nobody could leave her, somebody has to stay home, my mama all the time. You talking about tough growing up? I said, that was tough growing up. Got plumbed down, just thinking it was her heart cause, causing all these seizures. Took her down to Augusta Hospital. Okay, got down to Augusta Hospital. They're going to have open heart surgery. That's where they had open heart surgery. Cut you from out up here. All of them jacked you open like that and pulled your heart out. Worked on Had open heart surgery like that. Put a pink valve on the inside. Never sold her back up. Put her back together. Doctor said there is no more we can do. We don't know if this don't do it. There's no more med medical science can do. This is it right here. What happened? I had a father. And had six of us children. Dad come up to the bedside where the doctor was and get the report. No more hope for your mother. Dad stood, I'll never forget this long as I live. Dad stood down over top of us. He said, children, stay here with your mother. I'm going across the street down in the dust and we'll check in the motel room and I'm not coming out until God speaks to me. We didn't see Dad for two days. When he finally come to get back in the hospital, it was all standing around Mama. Dad walked up and gathered the family back around. I'm talking about being a priest in Cone. Stood back around, gathered us children back around, Mama, and said, Children, so I checked myself in the motel room and said, You and the daughter slept in the bed, what I seen. You sure wouldn't have took a shower and what that kind of shower I looked at. He said, But right in the middle of all that, I got on my knees and I began to seek the face of God. I didn't care what was in there. I got to hear from heaven. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. He held it there two days till God spoke to him. Then come up with that hospital room where the doctors give a death report upon my mother. You know what happened? He said, children, this is what we're going to do. This is what God spoke to me over there. Put your faith in the most high God and believe God. Hallelujah. Hold my up, boys. We're going to back home to Dillard, Georgia. Look, mama up. Guess what happened? She stayed with us 18 more years after that. I learned something, Philip. I didn't go to school to learn it. I learned that on one-on-one, -on -one, saints of God. I learned how man goes into a place and sees the face of God. And I learned, saints of God, once God speaks, you better have faith in what God's spoken unto you. And when your faith lays a hold of what God said unto you, there will be a performance of what He said He'd do. He's not a man, he should lie. Neither the son of man, he should repent. As God said, shall he not bring it to pass? Yes. He's not a man, he should, he don't toy with your emotions. When God speaks, he leaves it. His 
word is forever established in the heavens, praise God. When he speaks, it's done. I told that man the Holy God. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Still with me? I might as well just go ahead and blow it up. Hey, man. Last time I was with your pastor, I brought this. He never opened up to use it until tonight. I was getting ready to leave the house this morning. I looked back. I said, I see why now, Lord. I said, I see why now. So I picked it up and rode with it. It's like no snake. Amen. I just want to do a simple illustration for you. Something that's got a hold of me. Something you mentioned, brother. You had no idea if I told me in front of this, did you? My father made that. They used to come around, this right here, used to come around with a bucket, put on a harness, you put on horses, I worked horse work horses all my life. This right here, you put on, you run the horse tail right through here. Keeps everything going, put it on a saddle, put on a harness, you know, put it on the bridge and whatever, that holds everything together. Comes around the root of the tail. I want to get some roots tonight. My dad made that. He made that. And when he first went over to Mount Pleasant Church of God, he was just like this church. And my dad made that and put that up on a nail. Up on the side of the church. Put it on the nail. I would, we could have a revival house church. I'd see this hanging on the nail on the side of the church. And when the power of God get to moving, I'd see my dad go over there and grab this. Grab this off the wall. He'd take it off. Ain't that thing a racket? Ain't that a racket? When the power of God start moving, my dad get a hold of it. He start shouting, victory. I said, victory shout. When the power of God start moving. I see, I see him back to this thing all on the front row, all on the front row, he's shaking. Everybody thought he was crazy. Everybody thought he lost his morals. Nobody thought he was right, but my dad didn't care. Shaking and dancing. He'd stick it back up, and I seen this fill all my all the days he's still with. He said, Is there anybody else got enough faith to shake these bills? I lost a church. Brother, there's nothing over there. I said, There's nothing. I see a man of God who would shake a bell when they look like all hell's coming up there. And the Lord there's no hope but church to go. I see him pull the hell's off the wall. What I seen? Nobody had enough faith to shake. Nobody got up to shake. Nobody. I seen one man one night reach up and almost get a hold of it and pull it back. When my father passed away, and I was coming down there to the house, go for my dad's stuff, hanging on my nail was these bells. And I said, brother, sister, all my sisters, if you don't mind, I'm not taking them bells because I'm going to preach on them. Well, Sister Chris, come over here and preach for me. Sister Chris got a girl named Sarah. Sarah was doing gymnastics class. And when she completes one class, to go to the next class, you got a bell. And to go to the next class, you got to go there and ring the bells. To go to the next class. <laughs> I was putting all this on the inside. Okay. Then all of a sudden, I heard Melissa sing a song. <laughs> Honey, if you don't mind, would you sing this song? It's a song that you remember what I'm talking about. I've been on my way to heaven for a long, long time, and many things have happened. That's clouded up my mind But I am more determined To walk the narrow way 
I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. There's a golden street to walk upon, a bell on the morning, a brand new angel in the choir, and I want to hear her sing. There'll be a lot of friends awaiting when I walk through the gates. I've got more to go to heaven for than I had yesterday. Listen. I've been through lonesome valleys been through and I've climbed the highest yeah, hill. We up, I've known the joy in living yeah. in the center of God's will. I've watched the angels come in. I have. Pray. I watched the angels come in. I've home to stay and I've got oh. more to go to heaven before than I had yesterday. Yeah, listen. There's a golden street listen. to walk Amen. I heard Melissa start singing that song. I said, I got pulled out there and said, Bell, I'm going to ring. Well, I put that in with sisters, little Sarah. She had to ring the bell and go to the next class. And I said, Well, there's a golden bell. I'm going to ring when I get to heaven. Well, all of a sudden I heard this next testimony. This next testimony was this. This is a cancer patient. Full of cancer. Eat up of cancer. Stage four cancer. All of a sudden, they began to do work on her, on this person, and this person had absolutely no trace of cancer left in them. Well, you know what happened? On the third floor, for you to leave the cancer ward, is a bell hanging on the wall. Yeah. You to leave the hospital and tell the rest of the people, I'm out of here. It's a bell you have to leave. I've been a holy ghost in here. speaking. 
He pulled that piece of paper out, opened up, showed it to him. You know what he said? I'm gone. I'm gone. My father's gone. That man that got stoned. He's not coming back till he comes back with Jesus Christ. And what my forefathers have put in me, I'm going, son, I'm not coming back. But what you've been taught, what you've been taught in the spirit, you pick it up and go with it. I'm going, but you're still here. The Lord that comes up, there's got to be a man of faith and a woman of faith in our day. Somebody who believes God. I was wanting to pull these out of the car and take a check, but it wasn't ready. Because it wasn't time. You know why? Because it's time to move on. That's why. And yeah, when I come to leave for this service this morning, I look back up on that wall and I see these bells are hanging up there. And I said, Jim, I'm going to ring the bells. Holy Ghost showed me there's churches, brother Rocky. He showed me their arena. We're in our arena. And I looked in that arena and people had their head hung down. People had their head hung. There's such discouragement, such gloom. There was no faith. Everybody was no hope. And I looked and there's a man of God said, somebody give me a microphone. And I looked and the man of God looked at me and he said this, stir my people up. Oh. This ain't no time to hang your head. I'm not my heart, she's coming out. I'm not my heart, she's 
If you can get to the place, you'll be strong in faith. Giving God the glory. That's shaking the legs. There will be a performance of what He said. Can I ask you a question? All Israel, the church, was hiding in foxholes. That big giant was up there bellowing every day, 40 days. Give me a man. Give me a man. Israel, do you not have a man? Do you not have a man? God said, I'm a sinner, Lord. I'm sending him with ten cheeses and some chicken. Went down to check on the warfare. Everybody hiding in the foxholes. That big judge stood up out there. <laughs> Give me a man. Something happened to David. Give me a man. Could you hear David going to his brothers? Get up, boys. Get up. Go get that man. <laughs> You're crazy. You're crazy. No, get up. Go get him. No. Nobody can fight that child. Look how big he is. Every time he walked his five point on the Richter scale, it just got done eating dinner next to six point on. Get up, get in Nobody go out for it. See, I learned something. I learned how to praise God and thank God before ever seeing him. Everybody praises God when they see him. Men and women of faith and praise God before it ever gets you. Amen. Glory to God. Anybody just want to shake a bell? I get hit in my neck. This might take all night. I don't know.
reaches down and picks up the head. What happened to the church in foxholes? Somebody tell me. What happened? They come up out of their foxholes and they started to fight. Praise God. Hey, church, it's time to come up and come out. Praise God in faith. I hope I've hit you tonight. I hope it ain't the males. What it was, it was a representation. Huh? I said it's a testimony. God told the children of Israel, when you go to battle, Deuteronomy chapter 20, and you see armies bigger than you, and you see horses and chariots more than you, get the priest to pull out the horn, the trumpet, and sound the alarm, and you shall be remembered to me. And I will come and fight for you. <laughs> Wonder why he never let me shake at the last service at Cartoon J. I tell you why. He wanted me to shake it here. That's why. Because this is what's coming. I said, God's got time. I remember Sister Russell leaving. I, I heard you say, I want to know what God's speaking. I'm letting you know what God's speaking. Praise God. He showed me it's time to stir the people up. Stir their faith up. What is it? Faith is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. Look at this. Here's what the Holy Ghost spoke to me. The faith is already yours. The victory is already yours. What? He said the victory is already yours. It's already been won. Yes, it has. Jesus won the victory on Calvary. He spoiled principalities and powers. Made a show of them openly. Triumphant over them in the cross. Colossians 2.15 I said he spoiled principalities and powers. He's got the keys of death, hell, and the grave. He ever lived to make intercession. He's got the victory. You know what happened? He said, church, the victory is yours. Praise God. For in me you shall have victory. Can somebody tell me where he set the church at? Anybody know where Christ set the church? You got to read Ephesians chapter number one and two to see what where Christ put the church at. Far above all principality and power and dominion and might and over every name that shall be named not only in this world but in the world which is to come. And hath put all things under his feet. And hath given him to be the head of all things to the church which is his body. Amen. Where's the church? In heavenly places. Amen. Huh? Heavenly places. Well that ain't where I'm at right now in my physical realm. I know. But your position is victory. Your condition might not be victory, but your position is victory. And when you start rejoicing in your position where Christ puts you, you'll come out of your condition. Boy, oh, I said, I'm not full there, brother. Say, I said, I'm not full there. Amen. Keep on believing. Keep on shaking bells. That's what I learned out of my father. He's gone. Moses, my servant is dead. He's gone. But Joshua, get up. They're gone, Phil. Now it's down to me and you. Brother Lane's gone. Brooks is gone. Connor's gone. They call. Who in our generation is going to shake a bell? Who in our generation is going to show this generation the power of God? I want them to know Jesus, brother. God, don't let my faith grow weak. I tried my best to preach a word to you. I want to give you this right here. I want you to miss you gonna come up here. Yeah. I want you to get ready. We're gonna have a hello saints. We're gonna have a prayer meeting right here. <laughs> We're not gonna knock you. God's not a knocker, he's a healer. Jesus. Hello, church. You need to hear that. I said we're not here to knock you and push you over. God's not a knocker, he told me, he said he's a healer. <laughs> we're gonna pray. I said, we're gonna pray one for another. And that I'm done go, you're gonna shake the bells even though I'm going. Faith is a victory that overcomes the world. 
I read this illustration and it got a hold of me. Are you ready for this? 1982, 1982, there's a football game going on between the Wisconsin Badgers and Michigan State Spartans. Wisconsin had the home field advantage. 60,000 people crammed into the football stadium. It was evident Wisconsin had home field advantage. But after the corners got the clicking away, they began to understand that Michigan State Spartans had the better football team. And it was score was getting so lopsided, it was pitiful. No shouts, nothing. Till all of a sudden, people, 60,000, started shouting in the stands. Everybody was confounded. What's it going on? We are losing by the biggest margin we've ever lost by. And how can this crowd shout and rejoice at us being defeated? They couldn't understand it. Until somebody found out everybody had portable radios and had a tune in 70 miles away to the fourth game of the World Series. And in the fourth game of the World Series, listen, the fourth game of the World Series, the Milwaukee Brewers against, the, against them other bunch. You know what happened? Their hometown was getting the victory on the other side. They didn't see it. They was only hearing it. And nobody could understand why this crowd is rejoicing and praising when all the while they was in defeat. There is something right here, brother. Have you learned how to have victory while watching defeat? Hello, did that run out the back door? I said they learned how to tune in to another world and rejoice right in the middle of what looked like permanent defeat. Brother, let me... I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, bring the baby. Got my antenna right there. I'm hearing things that I ain't, I ain't seen, but I'm hearing them. I got her tuned up there. I'm hearing things from another world. And I'm rejoicing in victory. Right down here. Praise God. Hello. I said I can praise God right in the middle of what looks like defeat. Why? Because I'm tuned into another world. I'm tuned up to heaven. Praise God. And my father tells me, brother, it's going to be well with the righteous. Hey, man, the God greater is he that's in you than he that's in this world. Keep your faith. When the Son of God comes, will he find faith on this earth? Will he, when he comes, will he find faith on this earth?